But right now, you're probably thinking, oh, there's some alcohol on the stage, and it looks rather nice. And the background is the Captain's Club. So yes, we have Harry from the Captain's Club here, Hi who guys. is a wonderful mixologist. So Thank Harry, you. welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. And obviously, Pleasure the Captain's Club is in Christchurch? In Christchurch, on Christchurch Quay. Uh-huh. And it's a lovely show bar, really, isn't it? It's a hotel and spa. We have a beautiful like middle island bar set up, so you can walk both sides of the bar. We've got a lovely lounge area, followed on by the restaurant area. Uh -huh. So um, we've got the spa, and we've got function rooms, plenty of places to stay yeah. as well. And so it's right on the water, isn't it? It is right on the water's front. Yeah. So it's a nice place to work, nice yep. view. Lovely, nice place to visit as well for some. Yeah, lovely, yeah. lovely place to come and visit. When it's open, obviously, when uh, you're back at 4th work. 4th of July. 4th of July, yep. there we go. You're actually going for it then. That's yeah. brilliant. It'd be lovely to be able to come out and sit out on that patio and have a lovely glass of G&T or something. So I'm very much looking forward G &T to... G&T or a cocktail, I hope, yeah. Being back at the G&T. Dave, what's your tipple? Uh, scotch or Guinness. Oh, well. Yeah, scotch I do Guinness, like a good yeah. scotch. Well, we have Guinness and draft. Yeah. yeah, good bourbon. bourbon. We've got a wide variety of whiskies down at the Captain's Club, so... Excellent. Do, do like Dalmore. Dalmore's good one. Dalmore mm. 12 is a good one to drink, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his stuff. Well, you're going to do a little bit of a showcase for us, aren't you? Make three cocktails um, just to That's show the, the viewers at home how it's done. Yep. Um, so they can do it themselves. So it's over to you, and we're going to ad lib and add in and ask questions on the way, if that's all right. Yeah, no, that's fine. Kay. You talk away. I'll just make the cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I'm going to start off making a working man's cocktail, as it's known over in Mexico. It's actually a Paloma, Paloma cocktail made uh, based with tequila and grapefruit and soda. But this time I'm going to add a little European twist into it and use the uh, beautiful Atilicus citrus liqueur that I have here. So I love that bottle. It's, beautiful, it's a beautiful bottle, yeah, yeah. They do nice glassware to go with it as mm, well. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. So start off with we're going to grab the tequila here pick up your jigger and we're going to do 40 mil uh -huh. any particular tequila uh this is don julio blanco for this one in particular you can use a raspado but i wouldn't really use an aged tequila from mixed in okay it's more for drinking yeah always for drinking and then with the tequila in my tin i'm just going to put in a fresh bit of grapefruit pink grapefruit Mm -hmm. I'm just going to muddle that down as much well as Harry, I can. Harry, is there a big difference in within the tequilas? And you just said an aged one. Is there a big difference? Me not being a tequila drinker. Uh, Flavour-wise and how you can complement each drink, you would use different barrel-aged tequilas for your smoky flavours. Or if you just wanted to go straight tequila, the strong avgarve kind of taste, then you would go for your Blanco. This is the one you recommend for mixing? This is the one I mainly use for cocktails. I use Raspados, more and more delicate tasting cocktails. So if you have like your Fin Lizzie's with your coffee tequila and your whiskey, as you were saying earlier, or which is a good Christmas one to have. And then into that, I'm just going to squeeze just a little bit of lime. You can't have tequila without lime, surely. No, exactly. definitely not. So what about the old tequila slammers? Is that too... Uh, tequila Slammer, I would always go to Raspado because it's uh, a bit smoother to drink. Mm -hmm. Is it still a drink that's uh, you know allowed? Is it still trendy or is it something that's, you know... Still trendy. I mean, the Craig David's obviously one that's floating around at the moment. You have a shot of tequila and a shot of pineapple juice. I'm very familiar with that one. Ah. Being a Christchurch Bournemouth bartender. Yes, of course. He's a local boy. I just love the names they come out with for all these cocktails. I just yeah. sat there and just thought, I'll call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Craig David, yeah, being a bartender, you've got to get the funny names out. <laughs> so with this one, what I've just done is just muddled down the fresh grapefruit with a tequila in the bottom here. And then I'm going to add it in. Just 20 ml of this beautiful mm. Italian liqueur. I thought it'd be green coming out. <laughs> no, that's the colour of the glass on the bottle, unfortunately. Ah. It has got a slight tinge to it, but can't really notice it, okay. really. And then with this one, I'm not going to shake this one, because it doesn't necessarily need to be shaken, because I am going to be topping up with soda water. And the point of this cocktail is just an easy drinking, after mm. work, kind of come home, make it, drink it. Pleasant. So, we're going to drain all of this out. 
hopefully. It's very pretty. It smells good. Mm, it's all the grapefruit, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, really poignant on the smell and it's got great flavours to it. Lots of ice. Just top it up with the ice there. The important element. <laughs> yeah, keep it cold. Are we supposed to sometimes at home put the ice in first, let the glass chill and all those sort of things? And Ideally, yeah. I like to keep glassware in the freezer, especially for making cocktails. Mm -hmm. Bring them out onto the bar and it's got the nice frosted effect and you can see where the bartender's touched it and yep. it just gives a nice pleasant kind of atmosphere to drink in a cocktail. So mm. It reminds me of a good sunset. <laughs> and then you just drop a fresh bit of grapefruit in the top there. And you can also, like a margarita, you would have tequila. You can also put salt around the rim of this cocktail. Mm. I don't like salt with this cocktail, but other people do, obviously, like salt with a cocktail. So okay. <laughs> and then Good job. That's one of the, that's the Palomona. Lovely. Looks very with pretty. The introduction of the Italian liqueur here, the okay. Italicus. Are That's you going to test that one? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to test because of the social distancing and all that. We're not supposed to be touching yeah. and doing things. No, I'd we'll love to. We'll save that for <laughs> the camera lady later, <laughs> right? I would really love to, but... Uh, <laughs> I hope I'm not going to have to drink all of these. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we might find a way <laughs> for straws. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just... Um, it's a nice drinking. It's polite on flavour. It's easy to make. And if you're having a house party, you don't have any other cocktail tins, jiggers, or anything else to clear up after. That's lovely. So a question for you. Okay, so we were discussing off camera, I'm not a great cocktail drinker. But if I was to come into your bar, yep. first time, and I said, look, give me a cocktail that's nice on the palate. Yeah. What would you give me a first timer? What's, what's, for some people go for, oh, I've got to have amaretto, I've got to have an egg. Quite lethal. So what would you give a first time I person? I would drink? ask, I'd try and narrow it down on flavours. I would maybe start with what spirits you like to drink what flavours you do like, what flavours you don't like. Someone mentioned earlier that they don't like um, the amaretto flavour. Mm. Uh, so maybe stay away from the sweetness, maybe so go more on the dry, drink. maybe on the smoke, on maybe the vodka, vodka drink. One. Yeah, what would you suggest as a vodka person? Um, me, myself, I'd go straight up with a martini, with a nice vermouth, nice sweet vermouth, maybe dirty with the olive in it. There are other ways you can go. Sounds good. I just like spirits for being spirits. I don't necessarily like mixing in all this fruit juice, puree, simple syrups that you can buy. and I just like going for the alcohol taste. Fabulous. And I, I hope you do too. Yeah. <laughs> Straight alcohol every time. It's just it's the only way, Al isn't Alcohol it, really? and fresh citrus fruit uh, make a great cocktail. Mm. Beautiful. Harry, what's next? So next we're going to move on to this... Peach and calamar caramel tea Ooh, that I sweet. myself have been drinking a couple of months ago over the longest <laughs> day. Sounds interesting, this one. It is. You've had good practice on lockdown anyway, haven't you? Have you used the time to... Uh yeah, I mean, I have had good practice lockdown-wise, playing about writing recipes down, but not so much putting it into practice. Because yes. it's hard to um, do all this at home, I guess. Yeah. And if you make too many, then... It's going to be a late night for you, isn't it? You can't just pretend, so I'm going to put that much in, that much in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not easy, is it? Oh, I love that little gel. Ooh. Right. Okay. What's this one called? So this is a peach and caramel tea royale. Lovely. Are these secret recipes you're giving us, or are they uh, quite standard? Or are they this is one that I've flair? been playing about with for a little while. Try and get the measurements right try and get the syrups right, try and find in the right peach liqueurs to use, trying to find the rum that fits it well. Mm -hmm. I like my Jamaican rum, so I haven't really strayed far looking for rums. I've only differed in age and colour. You yeah. can get your white rums, your aged rums, your dark rums, spiced rums. Mm. So there's plenty yep. to play about, especially when you're working with rum. Mm -hmm. That is the art, isn't it? Find, like you just said there, finding the right rum or the right gin to go with. You've got an idea, but it you is, can't just yeah. put any... I mean, some rums, if I was to use, say, these Sailor Jerry's, for me, that would bring too much sweetness, too much vanilla, and 
too many uncertainties in a drink. So making cocktails, I try and stay away from spice. I try and like work up and add flavours to make it taste like it would do, but I've got more control over how the finished product's going to come out. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you just use... I mean, spiced rums do have their place. They mixed with Coke and stuff, but I don't really like working with them myself, especially in cocktails. There's just too many uncertainties that yeah. can come out, I guess. That's fair enough. So you're obviously a purist. You I do. Flavors. I do like... I'm a spirit drinker myself, so I do only really drink spirits mm. when I'm at work. Gotcha. So I'm going to ice up my cocktail tin right here. Okay. In our gorgeous plastic buckets that we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously at Captain's Club, they'd be in a different container behind the bar, wouldn't they? So not It'd seen. Be in a nice, <laughs> yeah, a nice well on the bar. So yeah, you're doing amazing coming on stage different. doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> so this one I'm going to start off with a healthy measure of rum. I'm going to start off with 50ml, so right up to the top of this jigger. Mm, very nice. Just get that in there. And anybody can buy the equipment now, can't they, from supermarkets? Or they can. A lot of supermarkets stores. do do like uh, cocktail sets and they come with a jigger, your mm. spoon, your tin. Mm. Recipe books as well. I had the joy to go to um, visit Bombay Sapphire. Um, oh, the distillery up on yeah, Bombay the Sapphire is really good. Yeah. Walking around the uh, greenhouse where they grow their botanicals on site. And That's right. Seeing the botanical, th- the, the glass room they've got there is just gorgeous and the smells and everything was just fantastic. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Even, I believe it's Amps, one of Amsterdam's airports have a big Bombay Sapphire kind of instalment and it just blows down like smoke bubbles in the middle yeah. over all the botanicals Beautiful. that they have. So far, you've put some rum in. And was that I put peach? some, yeah. So I put a double shot of the yep. rum. Yep. I put the 20 ml of the peach liqueur there, uh-huh. and this is the caramel syrup that I made earlier today. So you, you can see I'm intrigued by this one. This yeah. sounds good. Well, at least you're keeping up to date with the recipe. I'm just chatting. So, so this is 25 <laughs> ml of the syrup going in there. It's alcohol. I'm bound to keep up with it. I know. It's, it's normally my game, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> And then just some fresh lemon juice as well. Give it a little mm-hmm. tart, a little bite. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> is this a popular one? Or is this, are you saying this is one uh, that you're trying to tamp with? Have you tried it out It's popular with me, some of my friends. Yeah. I haven't really sold this one across the bar too often. I have to a couple of people earlier on in the year, but that's still when I was playing about trying yeah. to find the feet of this cocktail. Sure. You've got high hopes for it, Harry. You think it's going to be a seller? <laughs> Maybe in my bar one day. <laughs> <but> <laughs> so that's just all got in there together. <laughs> oh. Oh, I've got all giddy. Me in. Oh, no. <laughs> I've got visions of Tom Cruise eh? <laughs> It's all That's fun and games until someone orders eight espresso martinis uh, at yes. ten minutes towards the end of your shift. <laughs> but you know, it's part of the job. Well, it's all part of the oh. style and experience that you're giving, isn't it? Because I suppose the customer now, it's not just the drink, is it? They want the experience when they're coming somewhere. It's almost a showmanship. Yeah, I mean... They like coming in, seeing what gins you've got, and the bartender speaking to you about each gin individually, and yep. coming to a conclusion yourself on the mm-hmm. which gin should I have. Nice. And I'm just using a slight bit of our house champagne, the Tattinger here, okay. and this is where it gets the name the Royale from. Mm-hmm. Just top it up with the champagne. And the Tattinger. Interesting. Is there any particular reason why the Tattinger is chosen for the house? I'm not too sure. You'd have to speak to our sommelier about that one. <laughs> just interesting. I don't want to step on his toes. No, I'm not saying a word out of tone. And this is just dry caramel flowers that I'm just putting in the top here. Two or three should do the trick. Mm. That's really pretty. That's my Wonderful. summer cocktail. That looks gorgeous. Wonderful. You can just see yourself sitting you know, on a nice sunny day. Mm. Yeah, it looks quite nice club. and peachy as well. So, mm. would you serve that with straws or 
as it is. Cause Usually, the yes. It's, almost like it's a takeoff on the jam jar, isn't it? That's so it's b the vintage old jam jar has been brought back to be used so much now as a yeah, a new and funky. I quite like them. I quite think they're like quite nice retro kind of glassware for yeah. the bar. Yeah, definitely. Especially if you do like jam-based cocktails, or again with crushed ice and those blue cocktails look good in them too. Mm. So it'd be a straw you'd need though, wouldn't you? To yeah, yeah, a straw, maybe some crushed ice on top just to like level it out maybe. Yep. With this one, depending on whether they have a salt rim or not, is depending on whether I put the straw in or... So it's all about asking the customer questions to yep. try and get the result close mm, enough to it, really. And obviously it's all about customer service, engagement with your customers. Yeah, yeah. So Having your locals, knowing what they like. Yeah, mm. it's all, all part of the game. So it's cocktails now, uh, I mean, it, it goes like anything, it goes through phases, doesn't it? Is it r as popular as it was a few years back? Uh, did it take a, a drop? I mean, I don't know. It's I've moved around quite a bit. I've gone Guernsey, New York, England. So I don't, I haven't been in one place for too long. So I haven't had the experience of doing like, like I've worked at Captain's Club for a year now. Would have been a year full on if it wasn't for COVID-19. But yeah, so I like to move around. I like to visit other parts of the world, see what they're doing over there, try and bring a bit of the heritage back over here. Yeah, so... Mm, move the flavours around, basically. The cocktail game has changed, depending on where you are, mm. very much. I mean, Americans always... It's more spirit-based, it's less fruit purees, it's more homemade ingredients they make their own simple syrups and everything over there. Whereas you come back over to England, it's different. Mm. People really like their gin, they really like their fruit purees, sour mixes, raw eggs. So it's like, it's dependent on where you are in the world, mm. I guess, to mm. how the cocktails are. Yep. It's a thriving business. Because uh, we were saying uh, before you came on, obviously about things like gin and vodka's been through the uh, the change as well. Th there's so many more varieties out there coming to the market. Obviously, now people, like you said, you, you drink there. Um, you're experimenting all the time, and all these different varieties are giving you something a bit different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, take Black Cow for instance. They're making vodka from milk these days. You have vodka that's made from grain. You have more vodka that's made from potatoes. So it's not just different varieties. It's different ways and different That's procedures amazing, yeah. to come out with the final product which is amazing really mm. i mean chase i believe they make a cider distill the cider into gin and that's how they make their gin whereas other people would natural grain spirit add the botanicals the brewery distilling and then mm. that's their final product but well you've done two crackers there what's your third one um the last one is going to be an aviation cocktail so, so this is a gin based one. If you like your Palmer Violets, Palmer Violet Sweets, you would probably really like this cocktail too. <laughs> this is a gin based one. I'm going to be using an American gin. I'm going to be using the Aviation Gin itself, named after the cocktail, I do believe. Okay. This is a particular gin you like as well. This is one of my favourite small batch of gins. There are plenty of nice gins in Dorset that are being made with local botanicals, which I really admire. I really think that they have a really good thing. Yeah, we've but got quite a nice relationship with gin, with Shake and Stir, actually, because uh, we've had Conquer Gin have been our sponsors for many Conquer years. Conquer Gin are one of the really good local gins. Yeah. Get the botanicals off Hangsbury Head, locals, and yeah. he's done a really good job Very with our local. company, I believe. Yeah, Rupert's done a good job, hasn't he? Yeah. And uh, we're looking to go into, well, we've uh, just started a new relationship with a company called Viper Gin. So oh okay. so it's just something else to have a look at maybe. New one to New get involved with, with I guess. Yes, yeah. yes. Look out for the snake. That's the brand. It's quite different. Look out for the snake. The snake. Oh okay. Yeah. I'm always on the lookout for snakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my husband's dread snakes. He's off to Mozambique tomorrow and yeah. The snakes are the bit that he doesn't like. Mozambique. <laughs> yeah. Mozambique spitting cobra, one of the lethal snakes in the world. Sounds like a good name for a cocktail. Yeah. It does. There you go. <laughs> Next cocktail, Harry. <laughs> yep. Amazing. We've invented new one for you. Spitting we cobra. might actually have to get the absinthe out for that one. Ah. With a Moulin Rouge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So on the palette, what's this one? Is it the really sweet one? You said it's got the violets. So this one, the way I make it, it comes out quite dry. A little bit of citrusy just to take the edge. And uh, it has the Palmer Violet Sweets, which if you like your Palmer Violets, you know they're a bit difficult to kind of guess if they are sweet or not sweet. But still, I love them. Mm. So let's get started on this one then. I've actually, um, with this one, I've actually brought along a butterfly pre pea extract which will react with the acidity in the cocktail and hopefully give it more of a brighter blue violet-y colour. Okay. I'll let you crack on. Yeah. Okay. We're looking forward to seeing the colour. So this I'm going to be using fresh lemon juice for this one. <laughs> no, this is brilliant. Sorry, I haven't... I should have brought a Mexican elbow with me, but I actually haven't brought one. What, what is a Mexican elbow? Just out it's of interest. Um, <laughs> If you ever see a bartender squeezing citrus fruits with it, it's almost mm. like a clamp lever. Oh, okay. That's a Mexican elbow. It has holes in the bottom and it squeezes the fruit juice through. Right, got you. It's one thing, actually, I forgot to bring. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let you off because you came with a great big case and you've uh, you've done a good job, yeah. haven't you? You're setting up on stage. So with this one, I'm going to put the 40 ml gin in. Okay. With this jigger just about there. Aviator gin is a... Who makes, who owns that company? It's a famous name, isn't it? Uh, I believe Ryan Reynolds is one of the owners. Yes. That's or what I was does prime promo work for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's in my mind. I'm undecisive if I <laughs> that's true or not. But I do like the gin. I think it's good. It was invented by a New York bartender mm -hmm. and another couple of country, uh, another couple of people involved in it as well. Right. This is the gin you actually get on the Virgin Atlantic at flights now. Ah. They've just redone their contract, I believe. So you just poured in today the gin followed by... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's <laughs> all right. So I've done the aviation gin. Mm -hmm. I've done the lemon juice. And this is a maraschino liqueur. So okay. like maraschino cherries. It's kind of like sweet, kind of sugary. And this is creme de violet. Mm. It's a good mix. Violets and cherries. I, yeah, like I love cherries. the idea of the cherry, the maraschino cherry liqueur mm. sounds... Nice. I've got a sweet tooth, I have to admit. <laughs> I've got an everything tooth. This is, I've not found an alcohol yet I don't like, which is something I shouldn't really admit, but it is the truth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've noticed. I'm just going to add the butterfly pea extract into here as well. Butterfly pea. Yeah, I'm intrigued, but I'm not asking. Yeah. It's, um, it's an extract from the butterfly pea plant actually like reacts to the acid in lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruits, Kay. depending on how much acidity is in the drink is to uh, say how much it would change the colour of the drink. So you can add it in after, say, like a mojito. You put a couple of drops on the top and they will like slowly sink through, changing the colour of the cocktail. Okay. A little bit like, um, I never can pronounce it, Shambo. So that goes into yeah, like so champagne. Yeah, so that's, that's and heavy and that pulls through due to like the sugar and uh, the sugar volumes and stuff. So the yeah. more sugar in it, the more it likely will drop through the cocktail. Okay, the texture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't want to break your table, you two. <laughs> He's showing some moves there. He's normally only allowed to do that behind his decks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Ooh. Waiting for this colour. Dun, 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 dun. Well, I wasn't Ooh. expecting that. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. Hang on. That is violet. That is pretty. Oh, I wish I could taste it. Mm. Looks very sugary. Oh, that's cool. beautiful. That's wow. good. Look at that. Absolutely lovely. Look at that. Lovely violet purple kind of drink for you. Absolutely beautiful. So three completely different drinks. Yeah. Three different flavours. I hope they're completely different. But could all be summer or spring or whatever then really, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a lovely summer one for drinking out on our out on our roof terrace here. Uh -huh. Looking at the river. I mean, it's a sipping tapas kind of cocktail that goes well with really, really good food cooked mm -hmm. by our chefs in the kitchen. Of course. Absolutely fantastic. You obviously know your stuff. You're very passionate about it. Yeah. Admire Thank you. Hugely <laughs> about that because you, you've taught me one or two things because um, 
we were talking. Like, obviously, I do like my scotch. Uh, but yeah, I so quite like your one that you've invented. That looks interesting. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, taken me some time to get to this point, but I'm quite happy with it actually. Yeah, good. Really happy. Okay. Well, if, if you're interested in actually letting people know, if anybody comes and says, "Could we know the uh, ingredients?" or the actual recipes, would you be interested in, in sharing them? Yeah, yeah, with sure, with for a small fee, you know. Of course. Nah, joking. <laughs> <laughs> I w I w I'd be happy to share <laughs> any of my cocktails with people. Yeah, yeah well, that'd be sure. lovely. So that gets obviously um, helps other people interpret and try and, and sort of test out for you as well. So you can have little guinea pigs out there, can't you, testing your Yeah, your no, that's it, that's you. what I like. I like the feedback. I like people going away and trying something new and coming, oh, yeah, you I tried this and... Mm -hmm. ah. So for everyone out there, That's just don't forget, July the 4th, Captain's Club will reopen. Yes, July the 4th, on, Captain's be Club will the bar, be open. Doing I your magic. There, yes. So if anyone wants to come along, if anyone, we'll speak yeah. to you. Please come and get cocktails. Yes. Come and get some cocktails. I need the practice. I think this the word, <laughs> just the word bar yeah. is like, like, like the sexiest word there is at the moment. You know, my, my daughter just shouts, pub, please. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Everyone just wants to get back down the pub and I can't wait to get back to work and see all the locals and have the conversations and, mm -hmm. you know, I've just been missing people yeah, in general, start, to be honest. It's nice locals start. and the banter yeah. and everything, isn't it, which is part of. Well, we really appreciate you coming and doing the showcase for us no, today. That's cool. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, Good nearly timing spot too. on time, yeah. which is fantastic. Um, so thank you very much. Would you like to do a shout out to anybody at home while you're stood right here? Uh, as you've got nah, just the classic, hi, mum. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Harry's mum. Yeah, just hello to hi everyone Harry's who's mom. watching and I hope you enjoyed it all. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Great Harry. Stuff, yeah? We'll see you soon. Thank, thank you. Thank you again, Thanks Harry. For Cheers. Me, guys. Bye. Thank you.